and hit create. Then we can go forward in our timeline here mm. to say one second, move our platform to the right. So I'm gonna- I think we're gonna do better. So theoretically, we want to move our platform from the left to the right and back to the left. We want it to automatically do this, but how do we do this? Well, one way we can do this is using an animation player. An animation player is a pretty cool tool to animate things, kind of in the name, animation. So how would we do this in animation player? Well, we would use something called keys. Keys allow us to save a specific thing and put it into a track. The thing that we'll save is the position. So we can start from position 00, zero and move it to, uh, let's say, 100 and 0. We'll look at how we can do that in Godot in just a minute. But additionally, we want it to have one animation where we can move to the right. Okay, so we have a move right animation, and then we would have a move left animation where it goes back to its original position. So let's take a look at it inside of Godot and how we can do that. So here's our base scene where we just have two floors and we have a platform in the middle. We want it to be able to move, but at the moment, it doesn't do anything. All right, so in our platform, what we can do is make sure we add our animation player. We can head over to the animation, new, and we can again, like I said, move left or have an animation called move left. We can now go to the position, the platform itself. We go to the right hand side, you will now see the key that we talked about. We go uh, from the key, we key this, you will now see it saves this position. Now, if we go to the one second later and we move this, we can now key this again. And now we can see if we play this, it moves to the right. Now we can see that I just messed this up. So this is actually move right, not left. So let's rename that. And this is the move right. And now what we can do is duplicate this and move left. And now we can simply uh, change these keys. So we can actually just drag them like this, do the one second mark. And this is one second. Now we move to the left. Now what we can do is we can simply play the move right by default by clicking this. We can add a script to our platform. I will add this to my scripts folder. Here we go. Open and load. And we have some stuff. So I'm actually going to just delete this. And I will now connect my plat animation player. I will simply connect my animation finished signal and what we can do is if the anim name that we just played is equal to move uh, right we can simply play uh, we would have to actually get the node animation so let's get the player and play the move left so we would simply play the opposite of whatever we just did now we can simply duplicate this so i'll pop this out and i can say elif animation move left so i'll actually just change these up so if i played the right i'll play the left now and if i played the left i'll play the right that's it we'll essentially change the way that we're going now when i hit play you can now see that it is moving left and right but it's starting from the very top so you can kind of see the advantages and disadvantages of this sort of movement you can see even though it's over here it automatically takes us to well zero zero because that's where this position is in the animation player now of course you could make the animation player in here and do the same thing and that would probably work a little better but you can see the problems with animation player so let's take a look at a better way to do this all right so another way of doing this is using hard-coded positions now what we can do here is we'll erase this function and we'll add a physics process function and what we can do is we can simply take its own position and add to it, let's say one per second or one per tick, and then we can simply change it depending on where it is. Now, what do I mean by hard-coded? Now, also, by the way, I'm going to do dot x. Now, hard-coded will actually need a variable direction. And by default, we can have this as one. Here, we can just say one plus direction. And then what we can now do is we can say if the position dot x is let's say greater than or equal to 100 then we will simply say direction is equal to negative direction now this only goes in one way obviously so what we can do is we can also duplicate it and say or position x is less than or equal to zero so this will go between zero and 100 so now if i hit play you'll see 
that it moves all the way to 100 and back to a zero and then back to 100. So this is a very similar way uh, and it is it kind of works. It could work better if we change the numbers of these, right? So it kind of depends on how you'd like to do it. Again, this is a kind of quick and dirty way of changing our platform position. But you can see there's a few problems with this, right? So even if I move the platform, it'll kind of do some weird things. And that is because I hard coded the number. So let's take a look at a different way, maybe even a better way of doing this inside of Godot. Now, extending on our previous uh, example of the hard coded position, we can actually use the same idea using the direction, but instead of a hard coded if position, we can actually take this out. And instead, what we can do is use something called ray casting. Ray casting is a node, a ray cast, that we can use to well detect a collision almost. Now, what we can do is we can have it collide with bodies or areas. Obviously, we'll do bodies, and the body that we'll be colliding with is these platforms. So these guys is a tile map. It has physics layers. Now, if you're curious about this, I have some other videos on this. Uh, definitely check them out on my channel. But the basic idea is that if this ray cast touches something, we will switch the direction and have it switch the other side. Now, the target position is important to note. So we can actually uh, keep this at 25, let's say. And what we'll do inside of our uh, collision here or inside of our script, we will check for the ray cast. So here, maybe I can rename this to wall check and load it in. I'll say if the wall check dot is colliding, then what I can do is I can simply get my direction and switch it. Now the problem is, what about the uh, target position? Well, we can match the direction. So we can say if uh, match, we'll say, we'll say an if statement here. So this is kind of messy, but if direction is less than zero, this means it's negative. So if it is negative, we will simply switch the target position. We'll say wall check dot target position equal to vector two and negative 25 and zero. Otherwise, we'll set it to its default uh, position, which will be uh, 25 and zero. So this is the default. So this is like the right hand side. If it's negative, meaning I'm going to the left, I'll set it to negative 25. So it'll look like this. Negative 25. There we go. See? So this will allow us to move and check for walls. So let's take a look. Let's hit play. And now we can see, <laughs> now we can see that I've messed it up. So I want to make sure it starts at 25 and 0. So let's try again. There we go. And now we can see it moves to the right and left depending on uh, whatever it hits. So this is a good way of hard coding it, but also having it be dynamic. So it kind of moves depending on where the wall is. So if I change the wall, now the cool part about this is let's say I change this wall and have it go all the way here. The platform is dynamic, so it can keep moving until it touches the wall on the very right. So you can see that there's advantages and disadvantages of this one. Uh, if you have any disadvantages, put them down in the comments down below, or if you can think of any. So put them down down below. I'm kind of curious what you guys think. And let's go into the next way of doing this, a different way. All right, so now tweening. Now tweening is cool, and you'll kind of see what the advantages, again, and disadvantage of this are. I'll kind of go over a few. Is tweening essentially allows us to move from one position to another if we do it correctly. So what we'll do first is we'll add a ready function that allows us to call this function called move right. Now this function in this move right is very simple. We'll simply create a tween. And what we'll do in that tween is we will simply tween the property of the position. So we do this by calling the tween property function on itself. We'll tween the position and we'll tween the position to its own position plus the vector 100. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of a difference between this and the animation player. So it'll take whatever it currently is and then simply add 100 to the x value. Now, what we want to do, though, is when we move to the right, I want to finish and call move left, which is a different function. And we can wait for the tween to finish by calling this function called tween callback. Now, tween to the left will be the exact same. We can actually simply copy this code and just change it to move left. But the position will do negative 100. And this will call the move right function when this is done. Now, let's take a look at what this will look like. So if we hit play, 
you'll see that it moves 100 pixels to the left and right, and it is hard-coded, but it stays in whatever position it started in. So if I put it over here, it'll keep going between 100 pixels to the right and left. So you can see there's some advantages and disadvantages of this. Now, another cool thing that you could do with this, and this is probably what I would do, is I would export distance, let's say, and what I can do is I would want this to be an integer. Oops. I can make sure this, this is an int. And instead of 100, I can simply do the distance. And now, whenever I go to my platform, I have a distance, and I can give it a distance. Let's say 500. And if I hit play, you'll see that it goes 500 pixels to the right and left. Again, there's advantages and disadvantages of this. So you can kind of think about the time, right? So the time also matters. So let's say you want the time to be a certain amount. You can make it go slower or faster. So if you do 5, uh, that would, again, be a little slower. So now you'll see it's a little slower. So you could do some sort of calculation, like you can do distance divided by 100, something like that. That might work nicely. So depending on the distance, let's say if I did 500, it'll, again, be 5. right? So it works relatively slowly. But if I did, let's say, 100, it should also still go relatively slowly, around the same speed. So you can see it's dynamic in a sense, but again, it has its advantages and disadvantages. All right, on to the last method. All right, for this last method, we're going to change a few things. And the reason is because we're going to use a path 2D. Now, a path 2D is very cool, and it, we can use a path follow 2D. However, in order to make this kind of more dynamic in our current scene, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reparent this. I'm going to make this the scene root and have the platform be inside the path follow. Now, the reason is, and I'll kind of show you why, is in the path 2D, we can rename this to platform, we have points. These points allow me to go between two points. And now the path follow 2D, I can take the progress and simply add to it. Now, obviously, that looks very fast, but if we do it through code, it'll be a little slower. So let's take off our script there and attach our script now to the path follow 2D. And what we'll do inside of here is we'll uh, delete all this and we'll add a physics process function. And we'll simply take our progress right here and add to it. So we can actually copy the, pro the path, the progress plus equals one. And it's already set to loop. So uh, uh, this extends uh, path static body. So we need to change this to path follow 2D. We'll hit save and that should work. And now if I hit play, you'll see that it moves along the path. And eventually it should just go back automatically by looping. Now, if we, what we can do here is if we go to uncheck looping, I believe. Okay, so sorry, we actually don't care about the loop. We'll turn that off. And what we can do is we can go to the, uh, we'll say variable direction again, and we'll have this equal to one, and we'll add to direction. And we'll simply say if the progress ratio is bigger than or equal to one we will simply say direction is equal to negative direction again we'll switch it but we'll also want to do this if it hits zero so what we'll do is we'll say if it is bigger than or equal to one or uh, we're going to say equal equal to zero or actually we can do less than or equal to zero all right so now if we hit play one more time it should now go all the way to the right and eventually it'll loop back. So this will be a relatively dynamic way of doing this. Now, the reason this is cool, and I'll kind of show you why, is if we uncheck these points, right? We delete these points, right? We hit save, we go to our world. We have one platform here. We have a moving platform with points. Now, the cool part, I can just start adding these points. I can add one over here and one over here. And let's say I add a different platform over here. Now, let me save this. Uh, what I'll do here is I'm going to go to my platform and reset the curve and simply reset this. Save. OK, so we'll have to redo that again, but that's OK. So here we have a new point where we ha can create a curve. OK, sorry. So we have to create a curve on the top right. Here we go. We can now create a curve for this platform. And then this one, we can also create its own curve and create one right here. And now if I hit play, we have two different platforms that take from the same scene and they go the same speed. But now you can see the path they follow is different. 
because we set it dynamically. We created the curve in the main scene, not through the platform scene. So this, I think, honestly, in my opinion, is probably my favorite way. Um, but you know, you guys can let me know down in the comments down below what you guys think, what's your favorite way of doing it? How would you create a moving platform? Uh, let me know down in the comments down below. So let me, I'm curious what you guys can say. And if you guys like this video, definitely check out my channel. I have a lot of other tutorials and stuff. Um, and I'll see you guys in the future. And again, sorry, if you like this video, hit like, sub subscribe and comment uh, and share. And I do have an email list where I send out weekly challenges. Uh, so I've been doing it for about almost six months now. So definitely check that out and I'll see you guys uh, later.